Hi, it's Bumble. Welcome back to my channel. So, this is one of those times where I'm really glad that I recorded, like, everything that's been being posted, uh, like, months in advance, because it's finals time for me. I literally have, like, at the time I'm recording, three more days, um, to, like, get everything presented and tuned in. It's been a huge pain, very stressful, but, uh, I just finished putting together my portfolio for my Drawing 2 class, so I thought I'd share that with you guys. Because the first video I did, that was just the midterm portfolio, which means it's just the first half of the semester stuff, and this is the second half. It doesn't get like a fancy name or anything, it's basically like a continuation. I didn't have to do as many assignments this time, I had to do um, drawing faces, drawing bodies, and then a very cool project, which was basically like making my own OC. Which, I mean, as you know, I've done that before, but I've never had to, like, draw them out and do this whole process of, like, finalizing everything, making a character sheet, putting them in their environment. So that was a really cool opportunity. <coughs> oh my god, it's so dry. It's been so cold and it's, like, literally raining outside right now where I'm at, so... I'm trying to get cozy, literally under a blanket, too. I'm also not even supposed to be recording at the moment, I'm supposed to be working, but I thought I'd take a little break. So, though, if there's like a weird pause or something, it's, you know, I had to pause and like go do something or whatever. And as usual, you can ignore all the text and stuff. That's more for like my professor than for me. Yeah, I had to draw human heads. I had to do 12 to 15. I literally would just go on eye stock and look up, okay, women's face, because I don't know. I just don't like drawing men in general. I'm not really sure why. I just like women's faces more, so this is the first one I did. Most of the ones I picked were models, mostly because that's like the only thing that would pop up if you looked up faces, which I thought was kind of weird. I don't think this woman was a model though. <coughs> I know the teeth look horrendous, we weren't really taught how to draw teeth, like we would just be taught really how to draw the lips, so. After this one I tried to pick ones uh, that didn't show their teeth too much. But I like how the eyes came out with this. This is one of the only ones where the eyes were, like, actually kind of centered. I mean, we did learn how to draw hair, too, but, like, I don't know. I kept sticking with making it, like, lines because it was just easier that way. Alright, then we got these two. Got some models. Uh, with this one on the left, I feel okay about it, I guess. This is when I started noticing, like, okay, they all, like, all these models have, like, really smooth down, sleek hair, and perfectly in a bun and everything. I liked how the ear came out though, I tried to get it detailed. And I noticed with a lot of the models too, they always had like really long eyelashes and perfectly trimmed eyebrows or whatever. I like how the mouth came out, this one on the left with like the little bits of shading. Because I tried to shade more on these too. But I think my personal favorite out of like, not just the heads, but anything I've done for this semester, is this one on the right of the side profile? <coughs> I thought this was going to be a pain, but... I mean, I hadn't drawn profiles before, but I really like how this came out. I think the ear and the shading around it definitely helped. And, like, the jaw. I feel like she really does look three-dimensional, because that was the hard part, making sure that she didn't look like a 2D image. Kind of iffy on the bun, because there was, like, a little bit of loose strands. I really like how the face and, like, everything's proportioned and stuff. I feel proud about that. We got these two. These started getting, like, a little iffy after a while. Because I did these over, like, three days, maybe. <laughs> and I just tried to focus with, like, what I saw with the picture, which is why it's, like, the ears are a little wonky. Um, I sort of like this one. I really tried to make sure, like, she was looking up. Um, with the head, sometimes the hair would just be, like, completely cut off, so if it, like, it literally stops, that's fine. But I think it's okay. This one on the right, for some reason, it's reminding me of Adele. I don't know if it's the pose or something about the eyes. It's not actually Adele, it was literally just a picture of a model on a stock image site. I don't know how I feel about it, because, like, you know, there's a lot of little lines on the lips, like, when you look at someone's lips, but, like, I'm worried that it made the lips come out kind of cracked. I feel like this one I probably could have done more shading, made it more 
detail. It's kind of a weird angle too, like if you look at her head, like it's not really to the side, but it's not forward either. I'm not sure how I feel about her, like, directly looking at the camera either. Spooky. I probably should have given her a neck, that would have definitely helped. No, wait, wait, this one. This one on the left reminds me more of Adele, my bad. This one on the right, I don't know. I think it was the eyes, but this one on the left really reminds me of Adele. Even though, again, not Adele, different model. I like how the hair came out in this. With a lot of the ones where it was like wavy hair, it's like the hair pieces would go inside of each other, so I tried really hard with the lines. I like how this top part came out. And I always tried so hard with these to like get the eyes to match, it was always a pain. A little iffy on this bit with the nose. I'm realizing it's a bit lighter than I had wanted, but that's okay. Oh, and for all these, the professor had wanted me to, like, um, do different angles for the head and stuff, too. That's why there's so many weird shots. I like this one on the right. I think it came out good. But I decided to do the shading on the neck, too. I think shading on the neck and, like, under the jaw, but from what I've noticed, tends to help make it look more three-dimensional. I kind of like this angle, too, how she's sort of looking, but, like, one of those is, like, almost a profile, but not really, um... And I think the shading around the ear again, too. Kind of iffy on the hair, though. Like, I like everything except the hair. Because, like, it got really dark to the point where you couldn't really, like, see, like, I'll say the lines in the hair. But I tried, like, with her hairline and stuff. This one. So, for this one, what I ended up doing was I pulled the side. I had two pictures of the model. One that was, like, normal and one... I don't know how I managed it, because I couldn't figure it out again, but I was able to get it, like, super duper zoomed in on the eyes. That's why they ended up so detailed. I think these are, like, some of the best eyes I've ever done, honestly. That's why, like, with the eyebrows, I got, like, every single eyelash. Um, you know what pains me, though? Having to put in the hair, because her hair was going, like, all over her face, and I was about to do it, and I'm like, no, I got her, pa her face perfectly. I like to put all this, like, loose strands of hair. I mean, as long as you could tell that it's loose strands of hair, that's good. That's how it was. But, like, I felt so happy with how this came out that I didn't want to just cover it with all these lines. Still should have given her a neck, though. I need to stop doing floating heads. I miss these two. I think they're okay, I guess. What I did with this one on the left was... I started shading, and then I realized, oh yeah, I could blend things. Like, I don't have any kind of blend tool. I literally would go to the bathroom, get like a little bit of tissue, and then start like, going over it. I probably should have done that more on these. I, I used to do that on like, hair too, to get it smooth. I, I could have done that on like, the other ones. Kind of iffy again with the teeth, but I think I got the pose right, and I like how this, I feel like the shading, because I smoothed it all out, feels more natural. And this one on the right, it's eh. The reason there's like this weird circle on the nose is because it was like sort of shaded, but not really. So I just left it like that, I guess. But I'm mean, looking at this ear up here. I think I'm okay with that, like how it kind of pokes out, but it doesn't look like a round elf ear. It's kind of a weird angle with her sort of looking up, but like, you could still see the rest of her. And now I got these two. Uh, for this one on the left, with the full image, it was like this. I feel like I kind of screwed it up a bit, because it was supposed to be, like, perfectly symmetrical with the way her face is. And I sort of got the eyes wrong, where her head looks almost slightly tilted. But anyway, the reason she's looking up is because in the actual image, there's, like, literally an apple on top of her head. You know, this was just on human heads, so I didn't add in the apple. I mean, it didn't make her head look too flat with the way I did it, so... I guess it could just be like, oh, this woman's looking up. But that was something I was surprised with, that I managed to get, like, when a person's looking up or down, to get that sort of accurate. I was worried it was going to come out. Could have put, like, a little more detail in the ear, but then again, it's, like, mostly covered up by hair, so. And then for human heads, we have this one. I noticed I needed another weird angle, so... I literally tried to find someone almost upside down, and it was of this woman who was, like, laying on a bed or something. It was kind of interesting, and I tried to get, like, it 
symmetrical on both sides, and mostly the nose and this line between the eyebrows, I think sort of help with making it look um, upside down, because with the angle she's at, she does look like she's 3D, and I really needed to capture that, rather than just like, you know, if it was 2D, it's like, you know, chin's here, forehead's here, whatever. Make I didn't want it to look flat, is what I'm trying to say. So I even added in her body a little bit as well. Like, it wasn't too detailed in her body, but, you know. Oh, and then with this hair bit, like, her hair was, again, cut off, so you just have her hairline. Then we got human hands. I actually busted these out faster than I thought. Like, the, the faces took forever. Because, like, even when I would do them within, like, three days, maybe, it was, like, it took a lot of time to get everything right. Um, there's a lot of, like, erasing and, like, really pretty in lines. But the hands, I think they got this done in, like, a night or two, maybe. Like, I would stay up late and just work on these. With the hands, I remember because I had a Beatles playlist on Spotify that I was making, and I'd be, like, listening to stuff for it. It was cool. Anyway, um, the hands, I'm, like, iffy about this thumbs up. I probably shouldn't have put that as the first thing. I feel like the shading's kind of weird. Like, the shading on the thumb and the thumb bone here is okay, but on the fingers it's, like, kind of weird. But, like, I get, I get better with shading on these. So I did, it was fun. Like, I went on a stock image site and put in the hands. I was kind of tempted, if I'm honest, to do one of the middle finger, but... This is a school assignment for college, so probably for the best I didn't do that. <laughs> Hyper-realistic middle finger. I did do these, though. Um, I like how this one came out. With this one, I had originally tried doing it, like, previously with an actual, you know those, like, little hand model things, the wooden ones? I had it in this pose, so it wasn't too bad. I mean, I didn't do this image of it specifically from a wooden model. This was from a stock image. I don't know, what do you guys think of, like, these little squiggly lines? Because, you know, if you look at your hand, there's, like, little lines that are next to each other that look like, almost like how DNA strands or a braid kind of loop together. So I tried to get that. Uh, I like how the fingers came out in this one a lot. I think it came out cool, especially these two. Um, and then the right, you got, you know, the, the okay thing, sort of. Um, I like this, but... I'm not sure how I feel about these lines at the bottom, because there was just, with the way it is, a lot of little, like, wrinkled lines and stuff, because, you know, the fingers moving up, the fingers are being pressed together, so it stretches the skin, but I tried. We got this one. Notice in a lot of these sometimes, like, whenever there's these little lines, these big lines, I mean, it's supposed to be the bones, because your bones actually stand out, like, Usually, like, the three bones for your middle fi middle pointer and ring kind of stand out from what I've noticed in these, at least in the shots I use, so that's why they like that. A little bit with this pinky. I'm okay with this. I'm thinking maybe the pinky came out a bit weird, like, it got a little too curvy here, but it is also, like, if you could see with this um, middle part, like, you know, kind of angled a bit more than the other ones, but, well, it's a hand. This one I think is okay. It kind of, with the way the line is, looks more sketch-like. Oh, and by the way, I only found out when I'd gotten all of these done that these were supposed to be, like, five-minute quick quick sketches for practice to help with a different assignment, and I went, like, all out on these. They're also not supposed to have as big of a grade as the main project, so I'm a little disappointed. But, I mean, I felt proud of these, like, hands and faces, so... I thought I'd, you know, show them off a little bit. It worked hard. I think this came out cool. I can actually see the nail on here now, since I kind of blew up the image a little bit. The pinky's a bit weird, but I think it's alright. It's pointing. I've got more pointing. I think this pointing one is actually, like, the original image was horizontal, and then it flipped and I transferred it from my phone to Discord so I could put it on here. But I think it's kind of funny looking if it's pointing down, so I kept it, I guess. It's supposed to be like a finger gun. This right one, it's not, but it's okay. I think the shading helped a lot. At least the fingers are sort of visible. I don't know, there's the pointer of thumb, this one. 
these two, I tried to add more of the wrinkle lines. Uh, the fingers were kind of a pain here because they sort of blurred together. I don't really like how this nail came out. Um, but, I mean, I tried using the nails to at least separate them. And I like how this pointer came out. It's like, I think I got the ankle right at least. The pink side I think is good too. I think I got it. I think at that point I realized like, oh, I could probably like put in a little more shading as well as the wrinkle lines and it could help with it. I mean, there was shadow here in these spots. That's, you know, why those dark areas, but... I think the thing I'm missing though is, wouldn't there normally be a little bit of wrinkle lines, as I'm, I keep calling them, um, on the thumb? I'm just noticing that, you know, like I haven't submitted these yet, but like I don't want to go back and redraw. I have a lot more like final stuff to do. And then these were actually two separate images, but you know, they're basically a flip of each other, almost, of like, you know, you see the finger pointing up, it's the outside turn it, but this time the thumb's a little more in. You know, they sort of connect a little bit, so I put them on the same side. I like this pointy one. I think it came out nice. I think because I realized, like, oh, I could shade a bit around the bone, and that could help. Um, and this one's alright, too, I guess. I don't know. I think I went a little too dark with the lines. I think because the lines were, like, more in shadow, so they looked darker to me. I got these two. I think this one on the left of the hand, like, reaching out was the first one I did. Like how I got the thumb sort of right. Um, and then this one on the right is originally much lighter, so I went over in a drawing pencil. That's why it's darker than the other. This one, I think I did, like, before I started doing all the sketches. I think I actually took a picture of my hand, if I remember correctly. My, th my fingers are, like, kind of skinny, but not, like, this skinny. If you're curious, I'm not, like, a skeleton or something, but, yeah. So that's the finger and hands. Alright, so for this project I had to do, it starts with the environmental sketches. It was basically, you come up with your own OC, you make, like, a giant character sheet uh, with different, like, poses and outfits and stuff and a little information, and then an environment. Um... The environment I ended up picking was a 50s, like, space diner, which was something I did for a different drawing class a few semesters ago, and I just loved the idea and never did anything with it, and then I thought, okay, so with this character, let me just explain a little bit, um, you'll see her, like, later towards the end. Her name's Lucy, she's a cyclops, um, I came up with her for a different assignment, where the professor was literally like, oh, uh, you have, like, half an hour to come up with a futuristic design for a character. And I, my brain immediately thought, okay, I'm gonna make a Cyclops cat girl, because why not? Um, I made her, like, pastel colors, and I originally gave her the personality of, like, one of those, like, super happy female characters that likes violence and would smile and beating the shit out of you. And I gave her like a really big laser gun because I wanted the whole thing of like this tiny cutesy looking girl and then a huge ass gun that could like demolish you. And she had a little cat companion. I I love robot characters. Um, so I wanted to do a little robot as well. So I'm like, I'll give her a little robot friend. Uh, so it's a little cat named Egg because it's egg shaped. I didn't end up doing as many drawings of Egg as I would have liked because I had to focus on Lucy, but I don't know, with Egg, he's like supposed to be a little Tomodachi thing, sort of, and I, designing him, I imagined what holding him as a plushie would feel like, because I have a lot of circular plushies. Um, so anyway, they're a little duo, they're besties, she's like a monster hunter basically. I wrote like an entire lore for her. I would honestly love to make a video if I had time and I wasn't having surgery in a week uh, about her, but these are the environmental sketches. I put her in the restaurant, but I also designed her a whole house and everything. This is like her planet, and it's not the moon, it's just a yellow planet. I imagine, okay, because her world and everything, the whole thing with her character, with the way I designed her is Almost like the Jetsons, but more of if you've heard of Astropunk or Retro Futurism, which is basically like artwork that was made in the 50s of like people in the 50s, what they imagined the future would be like. So yeah, like think the Jetsons or something, but 
you know, I didn't, like, only go for the Jetsons, I went more with the aesthetic, and I thought, that'd be cool for a sci-fi character to have that, um, but then, you know, because she's this cutesy alien, I thought, I want to add in 90s magical girl elements, so I added those in as well, so everything's kind of a mix of that, and anyway, with the lore with her world, um, is that it's, like, sort of stuck in the 50s, basically the short version is there are these, like, highly intelligent psychic aliens, they're, like, big nerds and whatever. Uh, Earth in this universe gets destroyed in the 50s, humanity destroys itself, so all of their, like, remains are, like, you know, 50s culture and stuff, and her people end up finding this out at some point. And they don't know humanity destroyed itself, they think humanity was, like, destroyed by some other threat or whatever. And they find out about all this, like, human, like, 50s culture, and they think it's really cool, but also think, like, huh, maybe if we can improve on that where the humans left off, we won't be, like, it's not like they have a major threat or anything, but just, you know, like, a precaution. And they think the culture is cool. So her planet ends up adopting, like, 50s culture and stuff. Um, so I am drew this imagining, like, her childhood. I almost imagined cutscenes to go along with this, too. Cause she ends up becoming a monster hunter and learning about other cultures and going to other planets, but like her original origins is like she lives on this yellow planet that's like, it doesn't have any plants on it or anything, it's like, it's like the moon basically, but not the moon, it's just yellow. It's like, I imagine it as being very dry, whatever, I tried to add texture with the lines, it's not like grass or anything. It's like a very small planet, there's like other houses, but they all kind of look like this, they're like little domes. And I imagine that they would open and close like a Pokeball or a Polly Pocket, which is why there's this line here. Like, the door, I imagine, like, could split. It's like you'd knock on the door, and the door would open and you'd fall through, and the house would, like, flip open and close and stuff. By the time this old drawing came out, it's neat. Um, so anyway, the door would, like, open and close or whatever, and you'd fall through. So Lucy, she has like telepathy, they don't have mouths or anything, but if you're wondering about food, they absorb food like a water bee from Kirby, basically. So, but she doesn't have any like super strong psychic abilities, because they don't get them until they're older, she's like 17 by the way. So there's these handles here, so that way, it's like, as the house flips open and she falls through, it's like, she's not going to fall directly through, she could hold on to the handles. Um, and the purple lines represent, like, the psychic energy her parents, you know, along with the rest of the adults in her race are, like, really strong, like, psychic people or whatever. So, like, all the furniture and shit just floats all the time. Uh, here, I can explain some stuff, actually. Uh, the bookcase is blue. I wanted to mix in, like, the 50s stuff with, like, tech, but this room is more, like, based on them than 50s things, based on whatever their original culture is. So it's a blue, it's blue because to represent like the techno futuristic technology and stuff, it's basically a bookcase that's like a Rubik's Cube that they can flip around and it floats, so that's why it's like that. Um, and then all their furniture came up with like a funny looking alien plant that, you know, maybe they got from another, as like a gift from somewhere. Thing with the fish, I wanted a light and I thought, oh, football fish, but like as a light bulb would be funny, and I thought, would it just be dead? No, because they're psychic, they have, like, little water rings around it, so it's alive. I imagine it talks, too. Oh, because that's the thing. Earth animals, because Earth is gone, are pretty much non-existent. Like, Lucy loves cats and everything, but cats in this universe are basically, like, you know, unicorns for us. It's like they don't really exist or anything. So everyone's pets are either, like, robot animals based on Earth animals or, like, weird alien mutant creatures or whatever. So the football fish like looks like a football fish, but you know, it's talks, it's like mutated, it's not like really an earth animal. Right. This is her parents' room slash like library. Oh, and they all sleep in like these pods and stuff. This is Lucy's dad. So she has a pod in her room too. So and if you let go of the handles and fall through and this is just to give them some privacy too. Like her parents could like put her down or she could like jump to the floor or whatever. Like, most people wouldn't even know about these handles, which are, like, connected to the outside the door. So you'd fall through and end up in the 50s living room, which I tried to look at some pictures for this. It's pretty simple, like, you got the couch, um, and the big glass table, and not really much. I'd imagine on the other side of the wall is, like, a TV or, like, an entertainment center. 
and like you know it's a planet it's not like earth though so like you could see space outside so you got these huge windows and stuff and like a little nice like entertainment area for you know i imagine they'd only get visitors because there's lore to the restaurant i'll explain that later but, like if they need to entertain someone or whatever they go here Boris's this room is in a bunker because of course they built a bunker but like with the way the house flips it's like it's sort of underneath but not really it's like this brown top part is like the library and whatever and this part is like um uh like the living room and then her room is like somewhere under here so her window because she's like in a bunker or something she i don't know climbs through a ladder it's black but i didn't draw stars because it's not really outside there's like no light i imagine she just has like a lamp somewhere i didn't draw it um maybe she puts out like little cut out things of stars or some kind of poster projection of it so this is her room um i tried to make it like a normal teen girl room but like a little twisted um oh yeah you prob you might be able to recognize the record player in the chair it's literally just the aster set from animal crossing but i tweaked it a little and it's pink she's got her own floating bookcase um the tv okay so the lore with the tv <laughs> so when she's oh excuse me when she's a child she sees an ad and like back then like they only have black and white tv so it would look like this but without the hologram it would be in black and white uh she sees an ad for her little egg thing the tomodachi thing that like had just come out or whatever and she doesn't have enough money for it and she wants one so she takes a job as a monster hunter to, like fight aliens or whatever um uh to be able to buy it and she buys it names it egg she customizes it to look like a cat whatever her best buddies it's her only friend um but she decides she likes the monster hunting job so i imagine if i wrote a story for her it would be like she'd have all these adventures in very realistic sci-fi locations like i imagine almost like metroid or like she's in dark hallways or out on some planet somewhere all these more like serious looking settings but like she stands out a lot but then when she's off the clock she does normal stuff she hangs out at the diner she goes shopping she like travels around i imagine it looking more whimsical and colorful at that point more kind of almost like being puppy cat but anyway as she like you know gains more money as a monster hunter um because her parents don't really leave the house or anything they're like these nerds that just stay in with their library the people the adults in their planet kind of just keep to themselves in their little world she's able to buy nicer things so she buys a tv either buys it or customizes it but like it's like a 50s tv like design wise obviously but it's got like the little hologram thing that comes out uh she sort of i guess eventually develops more powers not anything like crazy but like maybe a little bit of being able to make things flow um oh yeah this is a beta pokemon i used as a plushie because i was looking at beta pokemon and i thought you know what that would make a cute plushie because i added a little things from our world but like with a twist because it's the future i can do whatever i want um oh that's her bed and her desk and there's supposed to be a headset here she doesn't go to school she just wears a headset because she has like you know brain powers and whatever so she focuses in on the sound waves and she's able to hear it almost like a zoom call basically so she spends hours doing like homeschooling basically she sits here and listens to it and learns the info so she has time to do her job and all the other stuff um oh yeah they still use records but like i imagine with the record player the music you know it's actually really loud it sounds like you wouldn't even need a speaker future tech um miku poster <coughs> of course you know me and the vocaloid fan vocaloids exist in this universe i'm still trying to decide if i want them to be like incredibly realistic androids that are sentient or sentient holograms but uh oh yeah Be during her adventures at some point she discovers about anime which relates to you know the 90s magical girl influences i'm putting in and she fucking loves anime and like whatever so she's miku's biggest fan basically so this is the poster it's my friend keep asking me is miku just pinged out in another window no it's a poster and then i had to have pinterest pins as part of the assignment how to take a screenshot so i did 
mostly just the rims of the diner, because I needed to figure this out. We got this, um, I didn't really use this one, but, you know. Okay, so I came up with the diner stuff. The owner is this octopus, I didn't give him a name, but I imagine he wears a helmet to be able to breathe because he's an octopus. So it's always either like a space helmet or a diving helmet. I don't know which one I want to go with yet. He's not like in any of the artwork that I drew, but I wanted to just add him in because I can. And then there's these two sisters. So in my original design, or er, my original diner design, it's in black and white. It's on a huge paper, not really the best quality that I did for the other clothes. I had one of those like bright neon signs on the wall, obviously not in color. And it was this design pretty much of like a human waitress, except she had roller skates. She was in a different pose, but her head looked like this. It was just squiggles, because I wanted something that looked completely alien for a head. Like, I wanted to keep that design, and I, don't, I think waitress outfits are iconic when you think of like these kind of old diners and stuff. So I knew I needed that, so. But I didn't want, I still wanted them to be an alien. I wanted everyone to stand out in some way, so like an octopus that's on land, for example. But he's just a normal octopus. But he talks, everything talks in this universe. So I gave them these literally just colorful squiggles because I thought it looked cool. And I imagine when they get, they feel like a strong emotion, it like kind of flutters out like this. So they're the sister waitresses. This is Doris, she's the older one. She's like the more experienced one that's been working. Like the kind of waitress you'd see in like a movie, the ones that are like, work there for 20 years, you know, hate their job, but still do it anyway, who've met, like, all kinds of people, whatever. So she, I wrote mean, but efficient. She could be a bit rude, for sure, but she does her job very well. She's very composed and stuff. And this one's Susie, and I gave her roller skates. Um, she's the younger one. She's, like, very kind and sweet, but very clumsy. This is her messing up. So they kind of balance each other out. So that's when I got to do the like more etched out squiggles. And she isn't clumsy to the point where it's like, oh, it's because she's wearing roller skates. She's always like that. Uh, she's the younger of the two. Uh, but yeah, that's the stuff. Then I had to do some drawings at the restaurant. This was from back when a classmate gave me an idea um, of like, oh, make her eyes different colors for her emotions. Because, you know, I don't have a mouth, so I'm at a bis bit of a disadvantage for drawing emotions here. I eventually got rid of that idea, but this was her, supposed to be annoyed. Um, this is supposed to be, like, she got her milkshake, she drank most of it, but she's waiting on, like, the fries or something, so just a little disappointed. Um, and this is Egg. I originally had written that Egg would, like, always be on the table with her, but then in my final drawing, I didn't draw Egg at all. I don't know, maybe Egg's wandering around or something. And this is Doris, she's taking an order, and this is a burger that I did. I came up with a whole menu, by the way. And here's the menu, and this is like a nice shot. I didn't go for this angle. In my original drawing, I had a hand coming out of the wall, and there was an eye. But I at least put the hand here. Nice, you know, octopus cameo. I haven't thought of a name for him yet. But, you know, a little simple restaurant. Uh, this is the menu. I want it to be, like, normal. Basically, with everything with this diner, I want it to be like a normal diner, but like, you know, with a space twist. You got the galaxy milkshake. It's not a milkshake in a blue cup, but the purple is supposed to be... I don't know. Maybe it's not a liquid. I have a sign later on for a milkshake, and I was gonna write on it, made with real stardust or something, but I didn't really have space. Yeah, the purple is supposed to be like the alien element on this. Maybe you look at it and it does kind of swirl around like a galaxy. Saturn burger. You know, got a giant onion, like Saturn. The green, it isn't like a green colored burger or anything. It's like made out of something green. The meat isn't like, you know, no earth animals. So it's some other kind of alien creature. Finger fries. I don't know if I want them to be like fries that are just, that look like burnt fingers or if they're literally fingers. I thought it'd be kind of funny. They just casually eat the fingers that taste like fries. Pie, question mark, pretty much. It's purple, we don't know what it's made out of. Mystery pie. This is just a little prototype design. 
The final one almost looks like this. This is just replacements. I ended up only using this alien, the one with the really long head. I came up with a lot of alien. No, I came up with like five alien designs. This one on the left, I imagine as being like, like a greedy businessman. So I'm, I imagine him with like a really strong accent or something. I don't know why. And I gave him this to make him stand out more. One of my friends said he kind of looked like Shrek. I mean, he's supposed to be green with gold eyes. These two on the right are the whole duo, um, shaped like fruits. This one's a banana, this one's either an orange or an apple. They're, they'd be like the side characters of a sitcom, like the comic relief that would end up getting their own spin-off because they're the fan favorite is how I imagine them. I don't know what their job is, but they're always, like, together. They're not, like, dating or anything, though. Almost like a Bert and Ernie type thing. The small one, um, I actually gave a human design as, like, can transform into a human-looking design that I ended up naming Rose, who... I think the details I wrote for that was something. It was bullet points of, like, looks like a... sounds like a British child, dresses in a schoolgirl outfit, but looks and acts like an old lady or something. I don't know. The the banana one doesn't have a humanoid design though. I don't know. Maybe they like have an episode where they have to pretend that humans are back into existence or whatever. Because I'm not sure if in my lore if I want Lucy to know or not if humans are like, you know, or if it does not exist anymore. More of that. And this is my final environmental thing. It took me a long time to do this, and my professor helped me with um, trying to get the perspective right with the floor. Because you guys know from my portal stuff that I try really hard with checkerboard floors. It's so hard. Uh, what ended up helping was we put like a little dot up here and had me like, you know, draw lines based on where the dot is. This just didn't turn out as wacky as I wanted, but that's okay. It's a character thing. I actually used like a reference. I had my professor and a friend uh, pose for me to get these two. And I think that helped a lot. This is, yeah, Doris again, actually. She doesn't have the roller skates. I, I wrote Susie in this thing, and I need to go change that. So I tried to add like fun little details, like the star is a character I made up for a thing called the Shape Squad, which are the shapes with faces or whatever. Um, and I adapted him into this lore because I think, you know, we refer to celebrities as, like, stars. So, like, what if a literal star was a celebrity? I imagine this version of him is kind of an asshole, but I literally went to go look at, like, 50s posters and tried to make one based on that. And I like to think he's so iconic because of his shape and his glasses that you don't even need his name on a poster. He's just there. And everyone's, like, obsessed with him. And he got the galaxy milkshake ad. I think it came out okay. Um, and then the clock, I imagine, like, this would take place in the future. It's, you know, I just don't know how far into the future. Because, I mean, humans are extinct, so you can't really use Earth as a time placement. But I like to think that their clocks and their measurements of time are, like, completely different than ours. So I even made the numbers outside of the clock. And this would move around kind of like one of those colored dials. I haven't had time to come up with a full lore on, like, everything in this, but I do really want to turn it into a story someday. Uh, we got the banana guy. You'd see that I made him more banana-like, pretty much. Um, kept his design mostly the same. Look, I had a colored version of him already. I just added the green stripe because bananas can be a little green sometimes. He's got a little goatee shaped like a banana now. Imagine that he's, like, very serious and a bit sassy. Um, he's, like, the mature one out of the food guild. This one my friend called, like, Flaccid Snoopy or something, which I had to even look up what that means. I think it's just, like, you know, they're kind of droopy and whatever, like, look at the nose. I imagine this is, like, a dog-elephant hybrid thing. It's got a really strong nose, so it can't see very well to balance it out. Imagine it's like the personality of an old person. I was gonna make it like really furry and stuff, but I think the gray is okay. Pretty grayish blue. 
Yeah, I like how this came out. Used all kinds of stuff for this action. These alcohol markers are borrowed for like the hair and the outfit. And those were really fun to use. I actually used crayon to color in her skin. Which the cool effect is that if you hold it towards the light, it kind of shines on her a little bit. Or she shines, which is cool. Um, and then, like for this stuff, I used colored pencil. And I used the Sharpie for the squares. I, I've used a lot for this, honestly. I've been using crayons more too, it's fun. These are my character things. Hold on. Alright, I'm back. Almost done. Two more slides. These are my character pens. I tried to find a lot of different, like, inspiration-ish, like, Niku for the outfit and just general vibes. Um, not that she's, like, a knockoff folklore design or anything, but, you know, kind of, you know, mostly for, like, the boots and, like, the skirt and stuff. I tried to find a, I think these are called, like, 50s pinup kind of designs of, like, there's, like, a ton of, like, these girls in these skimpy outfits with guns and helmets and stuff. And then, you know, I got the 90s anime stuff. I was going to make her eyes, her eye more anime looking, and then didn't because it didn't come out right. Yeah, got all kinds of stuff here. Um, and this one, black and white, one I used for the pose, too. One of the later poses I had to do. Oh, and then I need a lot of pigtail references, the pigtails. Mostly this pink one on the right to make them kind of flowy. And here's my character sheet. I've never done a character sheet, but this is really fun. It just took so long, you guys. I know they normally take this long. Then again, I've been working on this for a long time. There's a lot of like other sketches and things in my sketchbook. This is just like the final draft. So yeah, I tried to combine more of the like 50s, 90s stuff here pretty much. I almost imagine this poster as if she was making it about her, so adding elements that she would put in if she was the one doing this. Which is why, I mean, I didn't have to color these, which helped, but like, I made them more like little doodles scattered around, kind of like when you're bored in class and you start doodling everywhere. Which is why they're kind of just all over the place. Um, not that this is how she would draw herself, she would totally make herself look more cutesy, but you get what I mean. I made them more like the little doodles she would do um or like the little stars and hearts because i i looked at it and i'm like it looks kind of boring so i erased the marks and turned the bullets into little stars and then the hearts i'm like she would totally do that you know i don't know if she'd write her name like this but i thought it would fit i literally went and looked at the i love lucy logo and copied like the exact like the way the letters are it actually is giving me kirby vibes because a friend was like, make it faded pink. So then I added the little star. I went to go look up like magical girl fonts. And then I added the little cloud to make it pop. It was originally going to be in like a square or something. And I colored this pink to make it stand out. So I had to add character traits. They were telepathic. She shoots eye beams. I wanted to connect with the psychic power thing, so I made it dark purple. Uh, I feel as powerful and strong minded was actually how a classmate had described her in the discussion post. And I liked that. Because I do imagine her like she's not scared of anything. She is like pretty strong. I was almost going to write instead stronger than she looks. Like I was going to make her original design more muscular because she carries around a giant gun. But now she like fires the beam, sometimes has to use a gun if she's like in a space where she can't use the beam. But like, you know, she's running around and fighting monsters and stuff. So I imagine she's probably got good stamina. It's like pretty strong, strong minded even with just like... She does whatever the hell she wants, man. You can't stop her. A uh, girly girl that likes cute things. I imagine her as the kind of girl, you know that meme of like girls that say hi and girls that say bruh. She's definitely girls that say hi, 100%. Um, she's like the kind of girl that would squeal when she sees something cute and she'd like, like plushies or desserts and stuff. Like sweets and sodas, I wanted to add little fun facts. Yeah, I mean, look at her outfit. She customized herself. Oh, the thing with her outfits is she wear, tries to add in, like, the magical girl-esque elements and stuff, like the little star earrings, like, when she gets more exposed to that stuff. But then with the orange-blue suit, she still has to wear, like, you know, uniforms her people designed in order to do her missions and stuff. 
thing. I think I like to think it's more of a way so like if she has to work with people from other planets, like they know where she's from and what her deal is and whatever. She has that little radar gun. This pose is really fun too actually. And then this outfit. Okay, so my friend had an idea of like draw an eye on her stomach back when I hadn't decided an outfit yet. And then my cousin was like, oh, can she see out of the eye? And I'm like, she can now. So she's still Cyclops, but she can literally see out of the stomach eye as well. It doesn't have powers, it's just literally like a second eye in your stomach. It doesn't do anything but see, but it's there. I don't know, maybe I'll add in that it talks, or like it does something, or maybe your conscious exists in your stomach. I don't know. So I was like, I need the eye exposed, so I gave her a crop top and pants, kind of like a yoga outfit. I'm thinking maybe this could be her jammiest because this outfit doesn't fit with like 50s or 90s stuff. But I think this could be like a casual outfit at home. Like everything has to be extra. Yeah, doesn't care what people think. Her only friend's egg. I feel like she'd be one of those characters that try and make friends with everyone even if they find her annoying. That's why I won't try. She tries, but sometimes it doesn't work. And that's okay. Yeah, her only friend is egg. Like, they just hang out all the time, but... They're inseparable, so she doesn't feel lonely or anything. I like to think that as a kid, before she got Egg, maybe she felt a little lonely and outcasted because she didn't really like maybe growing up in the 50s culture and being kind of stuck on her planet pretty much, but then once she like gets Egg and then travels around and stuff and learns more about the world and about her and her interests, I like to think she opens up a bit more and doesn't feel lonely. I mean, she's interacting with people all the time. Oh, she has a little robot friend. She's fine. Uh, perky and bubbly special environment. I decided to keep that character trait. I do really imagine her, like, shooting someone with a gun, smiling or something. I feel like that could- s I feel like she could be both, because, like, as I developed her character, I imagined her you know, having a little more depth, knowing when to be serious, maybe taking your job seriously and stuff. Feeling more like an anime protagonist or something, but then I thought she could be both. She could, like, have times when she's serious on the job or whatever. She doesn't have to be, like, constantly happy, but she can. I like to think she relates to her people through violence. I think of it almost as, like, a comedic element of, like, she stands out so much from everyone else, but then she'll go home and talk to her parents, and... They're like, hi, and she's like, hi, and she's like, I, uh, killed this guy, I smacked him to the hip or something, and they're like, great job, kiddo, or, you know, whatever. I just, I find that funny, um, and just that whole thing of, like, cutesy small girl that is stronger than she looks. Uh, this is bored and pouty. I made her look too angry here, and this one was supposed to look pouty, and it ended up looking depressed. So I got the emotions a little wrong, but that's okay. I really like how this bean one came out. I don't know why I made her naked on this. I just, that felt right to get, like, I don't know. I can think of an outfit for this when I imagine the bean. Not that she's naked every time she shoots it, but, you know. Uh, and then this one, these. This one is fun, the anger one. I thought, like, in cartoons where smoke comes out of your ears, but it's her pigtails, like, even the little strands separate. And she's, like, pissy here. I feel like pouty should be, it'd be like this, but a little more casual. Oh my god, this eye on the right of her smiling took so long, because if I screwed it up, she just looked crazy. It's been like an hour trying to get this thing right. I don't think I really fixed it, but whatever. And then I imagine her pigtails kind of match, like, they sort of form question marks here. Or, on the sad one, they're like sad little deflated balloons. And then I realized they wanted more sketches of egg. Like, in my head, I imagined a sketch where it would be them in, like, a hallway and eggs on the floor, and he moves his little hands up, and he's like, pick me up, pick me up. And then I decided not to do that. I literally went to go look up, like, anime girls with cats, and I saw one of someone holding a cat like that. And, of course, the cats are long and stuff, and it was over some of her face, and I thought, that sounds cute. So, I did this one earlier today at her egg, because I need more egg in my life, and... Some of my female classmates also really liked Egg for some reason. They're like, oh my god, that's adorable. She has a little Tomodachi thing, and I'm like, yeah, I know. Because I imagine Egg almost like a plushie, basically. 
And he's supposed to have cat ears. He's just supposed to be cat ears, not like bat ears. And he has like little paws. And he rolls around, but he also has these little legs that pop out so he could just like waddle around. I was gonna give him a tip. It. I need to say it. I didn't make it like a, a male or a female. It's just. It's egg. I don't know, man. Then I forgot about the tail and just. I thought it looked more like a rat tail when I drew it, so. But yeah, metal cat ears, got the little face, um, made it green like a Game Boy too for this part. But yeah, I think she came out okay. I had fun doing these, they just took forever, and I feel really proud of this suit sketch, giving me like Samus vibes. I like the logo, even if it came out a little too cartoonish. But yeah, I actually have to do a presentation on these on Wednesday, so... I hope it's gonna turn out good, especially because I've seen everyone else's like characters and stuff from like the developing stages. A lot of people did digital um, as well. I mean, I don't know why I'm saying as well. I didn't do digital, but you know what I mean. And oh my god, some of them look very realistic. So I'll admit, I'm kind of nervous for my presentation. Cause like I tried so hard with the character sheet to try and make it stand out and to match the character, but. I don't feel like I'm as good as everyone else, like, drawing-wise, so... Eh, yeah, we'll see. But anyway, um, that's my full presentation. This is literally what I'm gonna be turning into my professor, so... Hopefully I get a good grade, and hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Oh, and if you guys want me to make, a, like, a whole video on, like, Lucy or any of the restaurant lore, because there's so much, so much I came up with, uh, let me know, or maybe I'll do it anyway. Thank you.